In this appendix, I will show you some basics about light polarization, both in classical and quantum physics. Let's see first what classical physics says about light polarization. Here you can see a light beam produced by a light source. More concretely, let's assume the light beam is produced by a laser pointer and can be approximated as a so-called monochromatic plane wave because that's the easiest to describe mathematically and it suffices for our purposes. To keep things simple, in the following we'll focus our attention on just one ray of light in the light beam. It doesn't matter which light ray we choose, because a plane wave by definition consists of parallel light rays that are all identical from a physical perspective. So let's take the ray in the middle of the light beam. Now, let's pick any point P on the light ray. According to classical physics, at P there is an electric field vector denoted by E. The exact physical meaning of this vector is not important here. It's enough to know that the vector exists and can be measured. For monochromatic light, we also know that E goes around P and in general it traces out an ellipse in the plane that is perpendicular to the light ray. Besides this general elliptical form, there are two very important special cases which are widely used in both theory and practice. The first one is when we have a degenerate ellipse that is just a straight line segment. In this case there is no rotation, the tip of vector E is just moving back and forth between the two endpoints P1 and P2. The second special case is when the ellipse is a circle. I won't go into details here, but if you want to know more about these two special cases, the circular as well as the linear one, check out the Appendix C video. In all cases, special and general alike, the motion of E can be written as a parametric equation shown in the red frame. The equation tells us, for any time t, the exact position of vector E. t is the only variable here, while a, b, alpha, beta and omega are constants that characterize the light at point P. The color that our eyes see at P depends on how fast E is going around, that is, on the angular frequency of E's rotation. Also, the bigger the ellipse, the more intense we perceive the light. Physically, intensity is proportional to the sum of the squared amplitudes. Here, just for convenience, we simply define intensity at point P as A squared plus B squared. Unlike color and intensity, the polarization at P is something that our eyes cannot see. It is the pattern of E's motion, the shape and orientation of the ellipse, as well as the direction of E's rotation, which can be either clockwise or counterclockwise. The size of the ellipse and the speed of E's rotation do not matter. That's why we can represent polarization with a normalized, directed ellipse, whose parametric equation has both intensity and angular frequency set to 1, to indicate that they do not matter. And, as you can see, omega even drops out of this normalized formula. Now what if we consider other points like P' prime or P'? Prime prime? Are polarization, color and intensity the same as they are at P? The answer is yes, they are all the same because the electric field vectors rotate the same way everywhere. There is only a time lag between them which varies continuously along the light ray. So it makes sense to talk about the color, the intensity and the polarization of the light ray. Here you can see the parametric equations for the motion of E, E prime and E prime prime. They differ only by the theta values highlighted in red in the formulas. Such theta values are called global phase. From this, it is clear that changing the global phase will only change the time lag of the rotation, but it won't affect the color, the intensity or the polarization. And now, let's see what quantum physics says about light polarization. To recap, we've just seen that in classical physics, the light ray is continuous, made up of infinitely many rotating electric field vectors, one at every single point of a straight line. However, about a century ago, experimental facts emerged that could not be explained by this classical theory of light. For example, if we produce weaker light by decreasing the intensity, Classical physics predicts that the size of the ellipses along the light ray would decrease, but otherwise the picture would look exactly the same as before. However, 
when physicists later decreased the intensity to extreme low levels, the previous continuous picture broke down, and it became apparent that light is in fact a stream of tiny particles called photons. The lower the intensity, the less frequently the photons are coming along the light ray. At higher intensities, light looks continuous because it's made up of zillions of photons. Now let's take a single photon in the stream. In monochromatic light, all the photons have identical properties, such as identical energy and spin state, where spin is the intrinsic angular momentum of the photon. Not too surprisingly, at higher intensities, the classical color and polarization of the light ray emerge from the properties of the underlying individual photons. The color corresponds to the energy of the photon by the polarization to its spin state. Thus, in quantum physics, the interpretation of color and polarization is different from that of classical physics. Nevertheless, Mathematically, we can still represent the polarization of the photon with the very same normalized directed ellipse as before. The reason why it works is because there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the possible polarizations of the classical light ray and the possible spin states of its underlying identical photons. And finally, here is a quick summary. Polarization is a property of light our eyes cannot see. In classical physics, polarization is the pattern of the electric field vector's motion. On the other hand, in quantum physics, polarization is the spin state of the photon. Although the physical interpretation in classical and quantum physics are different, the same normalized directed ellipse representation can be used in both cases.